you for coming. Thank you for the prophetic words that come forth this morning. Yes, you are. And yes, you can. <coughs> uh, seemingly to be small words, but they oh. spoke volumes in my heart. And I hope they speak volumes in your heart also. Because the, the Father is challenging us to hear Him. And what that means is, if we don't know how to hear Him, when God challenges us to begin to hear Him, He's going to be there ready. I'm not going to be off somewhere. I'm not going to go through 19 Hail Marys and 27 Oh God and, and all this stuff to have to get Him to show up. And you say, how do you know that? Well, what does the living Word say about it? Does, 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 thank you. Let's just see it, Holy Ghost. We all yield to you at this moment. Open our hearts and our eyes. And you, you, you had some tremendous prophetic words this morning. Thank you for them. Help us to hold them dear in our heart. That, that is not something that we... It's something that we are participating in. When those words come, that means we're participating in what you're saying, Father. Now, as we think about those things and go back home and listen to them again on the CDs, it's like Dr. Hudson said, burn those things in us. Let us know that we're in the right place at the right time, in position for victory, in position to set our lives and set our days the way you ask us to. So we yield to you now in Jesus' name. And what I started to say a while ago, and sometimes I get a little too excited about it. He's, he's bringing us to understand in Revelation that there's none like Him. And because there's none like Him, He has made you to be like Him. There's none like you in this earth. When you're going around, don't expect to find anybody just like you. You're not going to find it. Because you are unique. You are written. You are carved. You are engraved by the living Word and the Spirit. And in, in the Father doing what He's going to do, what that means is He has to be everywhere that's possible for God to be. And what does the Scripture say? Where does it say that God is? He's in us, but where else is He? Everywhere. Everywhere. What that means is, in this, if I'm standing here, now listen, listen to what he's saying. If I'm standing here, he's here. You're sitting there, guess where's he at? He's right there too. Well, what about this face over here? He's there. Yeah, amen. He's right there. Amen. What about this face over here? He's there. Amen. Now, yeah. I've heard all my life. Mark, about you know people praying and saying, well, the heavens is like brass and I can't get a prayer out of anywhere and all this. And in my mind, in my mind, what that did to me, that caused me to think that was God was all over here and there could, there could possibly be something come up between me and God. Well, we've learned by the prophetic word that's not the way it works. Yeah, amen. God is there. He's here. And the truth is, we've asked Him to come and live on the inside of us. So He is present right here. Amen. And what that means is, there's nothing between me and God. Are you hearing me? Amen. There's nothing there between me and God. So what that means is, is if I come to understand that I can speak the words that God gave me to speak. What did He give me to speak? He said, ask knowing that I hear you and you shall receive. Yeah. Amen. Now what happens is there's nothing between me and God. What happens is the mind will conjure something up. They say, well, you know, you didn't you weren't very nice today, so you, how close you think God is. You didn't do that exactly right. How close you think God is. But you said this, you got mad, you got tore up, you were irate, you even cussed the person that, that almost run over you. You say, well, why would you say that? Well, the only thing that left was my language that went out of my mouth left. God never went anywhere. Yeah. Amen. 
it did not offend him. See, people think, well, you can say stuff that will offend God. Do you tell me that in the last 10,000 years that God has not heard everything that could possibly be offensive? Now, all of a sudden, I have become the only one that he's offended at. And what happened was, my mind got tore up because I wasn't doing it just right the way that my elders told me or somebody taught me how to do it or somebody said this or you got to do it this way and you got to do it that way. It's time we throw it hog wash out and quit letting it come through our mouth. Amen. Because our God has taught us when we came into salvation, He took everything that had to do with sin and death and hell and the grave and He destroyed it in Jesus' name. Yeah. Now, you've got everybody else out in the world today saying, well, He didn't hardly destroy it all. It'll all be destroyed in the sweet by and by. Well, the only ones who say that are those who do not believe that the kingdom of God is here right now. Amen. So if the kingdom's not here, they can say anything they want to. Yeah. But if the kingdom is here, that means that the presence of God is here just like He said He would be. And, and look at this. If I run over here, does He happen to follow me? Or, or, or could it possibly be He's already there? Amen. If I get tore up, is it possible that He's not? And so that's what he's saying. He's saying, I want you to come to know and understand who I have made you Amen. to be. You are my child. I called you in. I birthed you into the kingdom. And if anybody's going to kick you out, it'll be me. And I've already promised you that I'm not kicking anybody out. He said, if, if anybody came to it, would he by, in by, by any way or any means ask me? Talking about the love of God, about Christian was talking about. If we will allow Him to touch us this morning and every day, He will. Amen, His love will manifest on the inside of us. And what He's doing, He said, Now listen, He don't have to. He wants to. Amen. He wants to. He wants you to understand. No matter where you go, you can't get away from it. See, so remember Dr. Hudson's read, read the scriptures. That, that Psalmist David said, even if I make my bed in hell, who would be there? Yeah. God would be there. Well, we know that there's a place made for the devil. We know that. But what the Father's saying, he says, I'm not going anywhere. I want you to understand that I'm here. And, and, and here's the thing, Mark. What I'm saying again is that, and it's hard to illustrate, but we just have to, we just have to listen. The presence of God is here. He's all around. He says He is. He's not only there. He's on the inside of me. There's nothing separates between me and Him. The only one that gets in the way is, 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 the, is the thoughts and imaginations that come in. Now, who, who is the main leader of those thoughts and imaginations? The enemy. And he's the main most one. And then the next one, she's going to get the name. The next one that gets in the way, people around us. Amen. And the third one in line is me. Right. And, I, if, if, and that's why he says, take those thoughts captive. Why? Because we're trying to get to you. Yeah. Amen. You're the one they're intended for. So let's get back to the presence of God. He's here. Uh, so if he's here, let me let me ask you this question. Did his ears come with it? Huh? Wherever you go, you're here. Did your ears come with it? Yeah. Hey, the, he the hearing might not be as good as it used to be. It's getting better. Amen. So he brought his ears. Now, what else showed up with it? His eyes? His 
at all. Did his heart show up with him? Did his power come with him? Absolutely. Did his ability show up? Did his power? Did his authority? His understanding? Now, in the prophetic words that we've received, he's been telling us, and we're talking about the presence of God being everywhere. You take it every you want to. If you don't think he's there, then he's, he's still there when you believe it's yeah. So that's what I see. I don't care what you're going to do. So even though I may not even say that's what I'm going to That was the perfect size. It really was. So in those words that he's been bringing, in the prophetic words that God, just like this morning, you understand that when that prophetic word comes, that was God's word to you for that moment. Amen. In those prophetic words, he's talking about, he's the one said this. I didn't say that. He said, did you know we're one voice? We're one light? Huh? We're one heart? We're one desire? We're one mind? We're one being? You want to know who you are? You are the being of God. Amen. Now, what that means is just what it means. Don't put anything else on it. Don't say, well, if you're a being, you know, act a certain way, you do this or do it. No, we've got to leave that alone. Leave it alone. One being, one kingdom. So if the kingdom's not here, how are you going to be one kingdom? If he's not here present with you, how are you going to be one in being? It's not possible, is it? Right. Amen. It's not possible. Now, all the Father is trying to get to us is that we can come to understanding that that's what He's got set up and that's how He's doing it. He says, not only that, let me finish it. One love, one spirit. What that is, that He made you just the way He wants you. Yeah. Now, if you've been around me way, uh, uh, occasionally, you're not going to see me act exactly perfect all that long. And you say, what does that mean? He put this thing in a flesh and blood vessel that has a tendency to fight him with everything that's worth. Yeah. Amen, that's the tendency of it. Amen. That's why he said, that end of it, huh? let's let that thing go and let it die. And one of these days, you know what? We're going to come to understand is that when we went in the water, technically he did die. Amen. And we won't leave him alone. What that means is, if he's dead, stop listening to him. Because the dead man is not going to give you any wisdom. All he's going to do is try to make you just like him. Right. Amen. Dead. But God says that's not the way he does it. He says, I, can't, I give you life. I give you help. And he says, I know. I understand you. I know you're going to mess it up. Maybe even a thousand times a day. But he says, here's the thing I've done for you. I've taken it and i put you in a new place. i put you in my son, the Lord Jesus himself. Amen. And in doing that, that when I put you in there, I got rid of everything else. And what he's saying, he says, I don't look at those things anymore. I won't listen to them anymore. You may talk and you may whine and you may speak and you may say this and that. He says, it's time to stop being who we were and how we were and become to be who He has made us to be. Amen. What that means is that we begin to step in harmony yeah. with the kingdom of God. Yeah. What that means, we begin to hear the melody of the kingdom and we begin to sing those songs in our heart. We begin to hear those melodies. We begin to walk in the rhythm of the kingdom of God. And the rhythm of God is this. Love. Love's joy. Amen. Love's peace. Love's gentleness. Love's meekness. Love's kindness. Love's faith. Love's patience. And love's self-control. Love's temperance. And he says, look, those are the things I'm looking for. You may get up in here and just like Dr. Hudson said, you think that you have to say it every day and if you miss the day, you've messed it up. And he says, no. 
I want to ask you a question. Who is the Ancient of Days? God. Who did He put us in? The Ancient of Days. So what He's asking us to do is quit looking six years down the road. He said, just live today. Amen. Live today the way I made it. He says, with the understanding, is you're probably going to mess it up, but I also want you to understand I'm not looking at your mess ups. That's not what I'm interested in. What I'm interested in is what you do with the day. Yeah, amen. And here's the thing. Once we begin to learn that the day works and it operates, then we not only pray for our family, we begin to pray for our, you know, Lord, I've included my neighbor in this day. Yeah. In this day that you have made, I will rejoice. What's that mean? I may not rejoice at the second, but he says, I will rejoice. Part of that is, is I rejoice somewhat in the beginning, but you know when you're going to rejoice? When what we've been speaking begins to manifest, yeah. I will rejoice. Amen. You hear it? As he's saying, and he says, that's why, you know, don't get tore up about it. Don't get religious about it. Don't think that this is something that, no. He said, this is a way of life, a way of living. I brought you into my life and into my health and into my presence and into my way of doing things, and in my way of doing things, I have great forgiveness for you. And Amen. I'm asking you to allow that to manifest in you. And eventually, he said, we've heard him say, as you begin to manifest all of that forgiveness, it begins to just flow. It's just like he was talking about today. He says, I made joy in you. And part of that joy is laughter. Yes. And I'm going to tell you, sometimes we don't laugh enough. No. I, get, I get so serious to that sometimes that I can see somebody laughing, and I know it's the presence of the living God, and I'm so tore up about doing something else, I can't even enjoy it. Yeah, amen. But you know how to deal with it? It's your life. That's right. how you got to do it. And you can enjoy it. Does that mean you have to laugh? No. But you know, sometimes it might help me laugh when I need it. I just throw that out and just say it, you know. Just that, that might be a possibility. And so here, here God is coming and He's doing all of these wonderful things. And what He wants us to do and asking us to do, just be my children. Uh -huh. Just understand that I've done these things for you. And understand this. If you get up today and things are so hectic, you don't get back. He says, I know, I know what's going on. He says also, you will be reminded in the next two or three. You ever notice that it don't go as long as it used to? It used to, you could go a, a pretty good long way. Oh, he says, now he says, I'll remind you. What, what's going to happen with this over here? And you know what he says? Where do you say? Amen. Now, I'm not manipulating and I'm not controlling anybody. I'm talking about the day that I'm in my life. Right now, I'm doing good to take care of my life. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But I know one day he's going to build his house. And when he displays this house, the world is going to know. Yeah. And God is, and that is reward of others. Yeah. Amen. And so as we're doing that, we're learning how to be a rewarder in that day. I'm beginning to learn, Christine, how to, that, that the day is set up and the Father has said, He's told us in His prophetic words, you speak good and you speak life into that day, what are you going to receive? Good and life. The enemy's going to try to get you to get tore up and agree with him and say whatever it is he's going to say. I'm not even going to go there. But where we're going to go is this, is that the presence of God is here. He's everywhere. And when the presence of God is everywhere, everything that God is, is there also. Amen. His ears, His eyes, His heart, His mind, His deed, His power, His authority, His ability, His light, anything you can say about God is present. Amen. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, like Christ said this morning, we break off that old way of thinking. Yeah. And we come into the thinking of God is that I am ever present with you. He says, I seen you at your best, and I seen you at your worst. He says, I love you. Yeah, amen. I love you. Amen. Now, what, 
What I want to do is allow you, you, to let those words of life and those words of love come out. Yes. Come out to, to those around us. Come out to you. Come out to set up the day. And this is the Father asked us to do his thing for us, for him and for us too. As he says, if they say all men of evil against you, if they do all kinds of harm against you, forgive them. When you talk about a deed, is to look at them and know they've done it. Amen. And know they did it on purpose. And you know what happened, Christian? It's when we begin to do that, God releases us. And it releases me and Him to be able to minister to them the way He wants to. Father, I know they said what they said against me, but by Your grace, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm trying to forgive them. And I'm speaking those words of forgiveness to them. So that you will be able to go. I know what you're going to do. Just like my friends have said. That you can go and begin to deal with them. And you don't even have to ask for it. Amen. You don't have to ask them to go. Because when you, when, you ask, when you ask forgiveness for them and forgiveness for you, guess what he's going to do? Guess the first place he's going to go. Right here first, I'm sorry. I should have said the second place. I got a little excited. The first place he's going to go is right here. Forgive me and you. And then the next place he's going to go, he said it. I didn't say that. He said, I'm going to go to the one that did that to you. Yeah. Now, yeah. here's the thing. Do you think he's going over there to hurt him or kill him or destroy him anyway or cause anything bad to come to him? No, he's not. He's going to go over there and do the same thing for them that he's going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Just say it. Just say it. And you know why he can do that? Because, uh, because he, he, he's right there. Isn't he? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so what we've done, and it was, it's hard to do. I, 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 one of them came to my mind while I was saying that. You know, I, I, I just had to stop them. And I, I hadn't really seen it clearly until just saying, if you forgive me, I'll be the one that ministers to you. And so I've been asking him, I've been asking for weeks and months for him to minister to me. Tell him, you know, go to him, touch him, do this, and say this, and do that. And, and it happens that just like when I started to talk about it, that hurt came back for just a second. Amen. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. And the Father says, now, this is how it works. You forgive. Amen. I'll go minister to you. And I said that four times, haven't I? But it was, it, it's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, I can, just like Dr. Hudson said a while ago, if you can hear it, and you allow him to paint a vision of it, you'll be able to see it. So for the first time, Christine, I understand is that when I forget, my father's going to minister. But I've been asking him for months to do this. And just in a second, forgive me. Now it's in his hands. Yeah. Just remember, Amen. remember the prophetic word that came to somebody a while ago and said that something is you know, born in the flesh. Forgive them. You know, he says you don't even have to pray about it. You didn't miss the part of that. I missed part of that. You don't have to pray. Just forgive them. Amen, Father. Forgive them. Amen. And let God do it. Amen. And I've been struggling for months with that. So I'm sitting there, what can I do about this? What can I say about this? Things are not changing. They're getting worse and worse and worse. And I mean, they are and was. 
just, it was terrible. <laughs> it's not terrible anymore. Amen. You say, why? Now I know what to do. I know how to release it. And Dr. Hudson has said that so many times before. But he also gave us a prophetic word this morning. That God wants you to see that he's doing it. Yeah. He wants you to see what he's doing. Amen. Amen. So, I'm, I'm learning how to take care of my enemies. And that's why I allowed him to take care of him. Allowed him to do the very thing that you did to me. Amen. And whether they choose it or not, that's up to them. But you know what does, Christian? It takes that handcuff off of me. I get my hand back out of here where it was handcuffed up and kept me tore up for days and days and days and months. Now. Now I'm asking myself, Bob, is that, that was worth the wait for? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And what that means is that he says, I've redeemed the time. Now you understand how I need to forgiveness. And what he's wanting us to do is understand that he, he's, he's always present here. We're going to try to cut this. He's always present. He's here. He's not here. He's in eyes and nose and everything. And, and you understand that you're going to miss it. That's all right. He says, I've got that covered too. He says, because you see, I am the God who does not impute sin to you. Yeah. Because you are in Christ Jesus, literally saying, I will not impute sin to you because of who you are in. You won't do it. So stop imputing to yourself. Stop taking on that well, I messed that up. Stop doing all that stuff, all of us. And let's just begin to live the life that God has made for us to live. And begin to trust, beginning to trust, like Dr. Hudson said, be in the place of victory that's in him or in his kingdom. And he says, be ready in, in season and out of season. Because if I have a word for you to say to somebody, you'll know it. Yeah, amen. See, always before, yeah, I was guessing, is that you, Lord? You know, is that, did you say you do that? And like Crystal today said, and, and, and said last Sunday, we're the victory. So if we're the victory, who's going to have the words to do? We're going to have the words of victory again. And what that means is that Father, it's like she's saying, she's, we're cut off yesterday, we're beginning today a brand new day. I will rejoice and be glad in Him. And that means I will come to know and understand that when I have a word for somebody, or I have an encouragement to give them, or just to give them a hug, or to love on them, and say, you know, bless their day, do what I can do that. You say, how do you know? She just said, well, ago, yes, you are, and yes, you can. Yeah. Amen. Yes, you are, my child. Yes, you are healed. Yes, you are delivered. And yes, you can speak to somebody else and have, you can't make their day be better but you can make it so that if they'll give yield to it that it can be better. you can't make them choose today you can't make them act the right way but what we can do is we know God I know you're there I know you want to make that day happen I know you are so you say how do you know because he said yes you can yes you can say that you can know you can understand I know I'm walking around like crazy we need to understand that the presence of God is everywhere. And a powerful weapon in our in our in our army, in our arm thing about us. And online, like us has been talking about the armor of God. That armor goes with us everywhere. See, in my mind, I thought, well, you know, you might loot and all and listen. It's like the presence of God being here everywhere. And if he says, put on the armor of God, now if you, have you you found any? Have you found anywhere in the living word that he says to take the armor off? No. It's not there, is it? No, no. So guess where it's at? It's on? 
Now, if he says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, what are you doing? You're putting on the armor of God, along with the putting on of the Lord Jesus Christ, putting him on. And so we're, we're beginning to learn those things. And in those things, Crystal, we are victory. Yes, Amen. yes we are. Amen. We are. Yes. We are victory in our own life. And he's helping us become victory and help other people be blessed too. And I don't know how all that works. I just know God said that. And since he said it, we're just going to be it. We're going to do it. We're going to see these things happen. And he says, you're going to come to understand, just like Crystal said today, I'm everywhere. And I want you to know, there ain't nothing you can do to run me off. Nothing. Amen. You understand? They ain't nothing you can do to run me off. Amen. But there is something that we can run off. There's someone that we can run off. And the enemy comes as a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. I look down and I send it. I put this foot here and I put that foot there. And I say, you have devoured up to this point. But I promise you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are not devouring any part of me. You're not taking any part of my mind, any part of my will. My Father has me. And the words that I say will do what they said, what Father said he'd do, because he's doing it. Amen. It's like Dr. Hudson said today, we've got to fight for those things. We've got to fight to shut down that stuff. We've got to fight to live in this stuff. And what's glorious and what's awesome, and I, I will stop with this one, is that they're a word game. He says, I would have a righteous desire to take control of your being and move every area of your life into the realm of peace. Yeah. Oh, Thank you, Lord. That I have created for you. Amen. I created that crown for you. And he added this to it, a little amendment to it. He says, when peace is in, the enemy is at home. Amen. Because the man can take them in. So by the grace of God, which is the Word and the Spirit of God, Father, we yield to you right now that your righteous desire will overtake our being all day long. And you would continue to bring every part, every area of our life, spirit, soul, and body, conscious, subconscious, and unconscious mind into the realm of peace that you created for us as your children and as your people. Father, show us how you're still doing and to live in this day that you made, in this 24-hour period. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you for hanging around, sticking, and thank you for it. Thank you. Amen, Bobby. Amen. 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 Thank God. Thank you. I've already taken the offer, so you just missed. Amen. We are victory.